some job board. But then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. The following is an America Matters Media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters Media. Hello, your computer has virus. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Say what? Hey, everyone. This is Kenny McCormick, CEO of Celtic Fish, and your host of Geek Speak, sponsored by Data. Thank you for listening at 1060 AM KFOY or on the web at americamatters.us. Now let's get to the show. Hey, everybody. So I think you like my thing, Brian? I do. Thank you. That's cool. I was dancing. I, I noticed. <laughs> I, I was very impressed. No, yeah, I made that uh, before I started doing the radio show. That's beautiful. So I was like, I think it's funny. It's a great intro. Why not use it? Your computer has a virus. Yeah, right? It's right. It's like everything you think of geek, right? And like, mm-hmm. yeah. But mm-hmm. that's just me. You know, I need a different seat. You need a different what? A different seat. Because this little button that right here that dings you yeah. is very hard not to push. <laughs> it's like when you have those don't push buttons. Well, feel free to push it at any any time. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Wake up. It's my time for my show. Oh, you're funny. But anyways, so just for those of you who are watching me on beautiful Facebook, these are my new shirts, by the way. I like them. I'm going to throw a pitch in for one of, my, one of my customers, Absolute Graphics. They did these shirts for my staff. And I'm going to throw another pitch in for l and Barbecue. Oh. Um, they're delicious. They're so delicious. I dropped it all over my shirt that I was wearing. So that's why I had to put on one of my staff shirts, <laughs> one of my field guy shirts, because I was like, I got nothing else to wear. But LNL barbecue's so good. I love LNL. Oh, right. Yeah. They're opening a new location. I don't know if you know this. I don't know where you live, but Sparks. Oh, Sparks. Well, they got the one off of Prater mm-hmm. and Vista? Uh, McCarran. McCarran? McCarran and Prater. I knew it was in that area. Somewhere on that. It's on Prater. Yeah. It's good. That's a long road. You'll, <laughs> you'll find it. But they're opening one up uh, Golden Valley, right next to oh. where Round Tables Pizza is. If anyone is excited as I am, because <laughs> I live in that direction. I live in Cold Springs area. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, I can get pizza for the wifey and l and barbecue for me. Yep. I love it. I'll go with the l and before I go with the pizza, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. sorry. Look at me. I look like an islander who's chubby. <laughs> Perfect. You look great. You know, I think Gabriel Iglesias said it best. You know, he, a swollen Mexican is the uh, Hawaiian person. Yeah. It's like, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's me. But I'm not Mexican. I'm just, I'm Filipino. But still, I'm swollen. So I can eat. It's okay to be swollen. I love their food. Their chicken katsu. Oh. <sighs> Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> but anyways, for those who were listening last week, yes, I failed. I wasn't here. Oh. So, sorry. So, my news is a little on the older side, but it's still relevant. Because most people don't listen to or uh, watch BBC tech news like I do. <laughs> Because usually it comes out in BBC, and then I see it a couple days later in Mm -hmm. the U.S., so I'm like, cool. But conjoining twins were separated with the help of virtual reality. Wow. What happened? 
um, well, they were born, and I felt really bad when I saw how they were born. Mm. Uh, their heads were together. And it's never good. No, right? Because, like, think of the labor on that. Yeah. And think, how was that in her belly? Yeah. Like, that thing coming out, it's like, you can't get it to come head first. One. And then two, it's like the hardest part's the head, and you got two of them coming at a time. It's like, ow. Oh. Poor things. But it was like, it was pretty bad looking. Like, there were cute kids, so at least their face. Right. The head thing just, just for me, but whatever. Um, but they're Brazilian twins. They were joined at the head, but they were separated successfully. Wow. Uh, what they did is they used virtual reality to practice. On, so they they did MRIs and uh, CAT scans and CTs. Uh, CTs and oh, we'll just CAT <laughs> and MRIs. They put it together into a virtual reality simulator. Yeah, and the staff practiced for weeks and months. Oh no way! On separating these children successfully. That is amazing, right? Yeah. So. It's not just for playing Pong or chopping people in half with. Um, there is actual legitimate uses for it now. It's a beautiful use right there. Right? Yeah. Um, I've heard of them talking about doing like online classes, virtual reality, so you can sit and take classes all around the world and have students everywhere. How oh, cool. That to me is awesome, yeah. but I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. Because, you know, the kids would be like, I'm here. Yeah. And really, they're playing video games. Yeah, it's not real hands-on. It's uh, eyes-on. But, I mean, the idea of it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you could go anywhere in the world for field trips. And anywhere in the world just to learn. Just to, Yeah, just to learn uh, what the place is like, where to go. Right, how to get around that's a great idea, yeah. Well, they were using it, they did research a few months ago. I think I reported on it, it might have been sooner or longer, but the research came out and I reported on it that they were using it for elderly couples during um COVID. Oh, and it showed a peak or a spike in happiness and better lifestyles. For people that they were using virtual reality on. Oh wow! So okay, because they were able to go check things off their bucket list, even though they really didn't go. They were able to go to these other countries. That's amazing. So perfect in my mind. You've seen the movies when you were younger about you know people traveling virtually, and it's starting to happen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm you know the only thing next that needs to happen is Skynet. <laughs> yes, the robots will take over the world. That's right. And for anyone who doesn't understand that reference is listening to this station, you're too young to be listening to this station. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Keep listening. And then find out what Skynet is. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So um, Starlink, speaking of Skynet, <laughs> mm -hmm. Starlink, uh, has, there has been a lot of reports of people seeing sa thousands of satellites being launched into the space. Huh. Um, people are seeing these satellites being launched all over all the time. Really? Yeah. And since the start in 2018, they have over 3,000 satellites. Wow. Up there. And eventually they're projecting to have 10 or 12,000 satellites. And and the reason for this, pardon so, my ignorance. Oh, no. I'm glad you asked. Ah. <laughs> it was actually my next point. Oh, perfect. Sorry. So, the, no, don't be sorry. I, this is why I like having the conversation, is so you guys can ask, and I don't have to <laughs> be like, okay, then this is why. <laughs> um, basically, the... Normal satellites that we use today, mm -hmm. like for government, TV, which is kind of eh, satellite. It's not real satellite list. You're using like Viasat or something like that yeah. or HughesNet where it actually is tracking the satellite. Mm -hmm. You don't have one of those type of satellites. You have one that's pointing at a dish that's 
than doing the satellite, it's different. But true satellite communications is they have the satellites are at 621 plus miles in space. Wow. Okay. Um, to prevent as much latency, yeah, they are launching the um, Starlight uh, Starlink. I have to look at it because I keep wanting to mm-hmm. call it. Um, just start it. Yeah, or, say Starnet. Yeah. Um, they're launching them at 341 feet or miles above the earth. Why would they do that? Uh, less travel time for data. So the latency, the, yeah. yeah. So it helps with the latency, but the problem when they do that is it's just like if you take like a cone effect yeah. and you think about how like sound travels and everything where it does like a cone yeah. out from the location. Well, at 621 miles above space, think of the cone that that has versus 341. It's going to be, I don't think it's half, but I think it's quite a bit smaller. Yeah. And can you explain the latency, the word latency, what that means? for Some um, people probably have never heard that. So latency is the time it takes. Uh, basically think of like lightning. When lightning hits, you see it, then you hear it. Right. Crackle. And crack. yeah. that time delay is the latency that we're looking at when oh. we talk about data. So how long does it take from when you hit enter for it to go there and back or go there to so its location? So that's a latency. Okay. Yes. Very good. On a normal um, spectrum, we're looking at, like, within your network, you're looking at milliseconds of from me going, hey, and then it comes right back. Yes. Where I I remember when I was overseas in 2003 with my with the military, and I had to do a I would do phone calls to my wife when I can, and we were doing it all through satellite. Oh. And it was literally, I would talk and count to like 30 seconds, and then. She would respond. Oh, it wasn't it wasn't even getting there for ever. Yeah, and oh. it was like we would continuously have over talk each other and answer each other's questions and have to wait. Yeah, it might not have been thirty seconds, but it was still. It felt like forever because, like, I remember going one one thousand, two one thousand, <laughs> three one thousand, four one thousand. That's a tra- it's traveling. Yes, and like we, you know how like you see in the movies where they're always like break you know over mm-hmm. <laughs> and just so that they do the conversation we ended up start doing that wow just so oh that, yes you know that it's over yeah so yeah. That the next person would talk but then you just sit there and quiet <laughs> makes for a difficult conversation yeah so i know technology is better now yeah. but <laughs> that's the kind of thought where i have when i think of satellite the people who i have heard have it I actually got hit with this question yesterday, which kind of surprised me. So they should be listening because I told them about my show. Um, that um, I've talked to about four people since yesterday about it. And they said that the speeds are pretty good and the latency isn't that bad. Huh. Okay. But you're looking at a solid start. It's a pretty hefty upfront fee of $700. Oof. And then you're looking at about a hundred bucks a month. Wow. Okay. So that's to get internet definitely for the rural areas. It's definitely worth it. Especially if you want to keep up with technology. Some people don't care. Oh, and that drops back to the latency thing. You're talking about getting some good, some decent yeah. speeds. Because if you have to turn on your computer and hear <laughs> And yes, if you don't know what that is, you should have been listening to the show <laughs> thirty years ago, twenty yeah. years ago. Um, if if you know if you have to still do dial up or you're using DSL that only getting you one to three <laughs> megabytes a second, yeah, you might want to look into changing. Yeah, but I'd say so. I mean, it's definitely worth it. Technology today is growing, and you can cut your other bills down some way and. It's your piece of equipment. You can use it when you travel. You yeah. Go camping with it. Speeds up work. 
you know, you don't have, you're not waiting forever. You can get things done. I work off a computer all day long. So unfortunately I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, you sell printers. So I do. Yeah. It makes us a great team. <laughs> I don't have to do Let's it. team up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's get together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's about the best you're going to hear me sing guys. So uh, it's not bad. Uh, that's pretty good. You know, the song in my head, or uh, voice in my head, is way different than the voice that actually comes out. <laughs> so I really don't know how I sing or anything. That's usually how it works for most people, yeah. right? My sing kid, in the shower. Yeah, I sing to my kids all the time, and they love my voice. Either that or they're just saying it. But like, <laughs> they'll ask me to sing Grandma's Feather Bed all the time. Oh, John Denver? Uh-huh. Oh, it's yeah. a great tune. The When I Was an Itty Bitty Boy, uh -huh. Just Above the Floor. I love that song. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's my day. Is it? They When I was uh, in elementary school, that was the kind of songs my school would teach us. Really? Yeah. Only the, you know, it was nine feet high, six feet, that side yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah. That's all they would teach us. But that in like paper roses and paper roses. That goes back a, a little ways from John Denver. I think the John Denver stuff's about seventy four or five. Paper roses. Wow. Sixties? Wow. Fifties? I have <laughs> Who did paper no, who did paper roses? I don't know, some girl. Lin, uh, what <laughs> I wanna say like Lynn Lynn Carter. Paper roses. I, I don't know. Oh. Oh, how real those roses seem uh -huh. to be. I'll find out. You go ahead. I'm going to oh. look on my phone. Oh, thank you. All right. So, <laughs> sorry. Now, oh, you're good. <laughs> now, one of the things that I've been asked a lot lately um, is building personal computers and gaming systems and business computers and if I want to build them myself or buy them or what to do. As a whole, my always my recommendation is go buy it. Buy one off the shelf. Unless you have specific reasons for doing it. But like if you want a a really good computer system for gaming, build it. You're gonna get your money's worth. If you're just gonna be using it to surf the internet, there's no need to build it. Go get a Dell. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, Solid. So what I'm going to say, depending on what you need it for, is always what is going to change if you build it or not. Um, but if you are still determined on building your computer, first question you ask is, what will you be doing with this computer? Uh, if you're just surfing the internet, go buy one. Don't waste your time. <laughs> It's a pain in the butt. But if you're going to be doing internet, you don't need a huge processor. You don't need tons of memory. You don't need a huge video card. Basic, bare bone. If you're gaming, look at the specs of your games that you're going to be playing. Yeah. Because that's going to determine how big of a processor, how much of a uh, video card you need, all that. Same thing with if you're doing architecture. If you're using CAD files, those things are huge. That's also going to determine how big of your hard drive and all that stuff you need. If you're word processing, go buy it. <laughs> don't waste your time. But you really don't need much. Um, we just built a computer for an architecture company or an engineering company. And this thing is crazy fast. Really? Like you push the on button and it's on. Wow. From dead stop on. But it, it's amazing. Like, I've never... I like the sound of that. Oh, yeah. And it, <laughs> it, it, they paid a pretty penny for it. But it, it's amazing. Uh, ask yourself what programs. I already said that. You're going to learn the requirements. Uh, then you want to shop your equipment. Key thing when you shop your equipment, make sure everything is compatible. And I know that's stupid. And it's also going to depend on who you're talking to is what they're going to say what you start with. The thing I always start with is the video card. Yeah. I find a video card that will 
work for what I needed to do, that it'll it's fast enough and strong enough. And I adjust my um, from there. I go to my motherboard. Some people start with their processor right. and move to the motherboard. Some what, people start from the motherboard. What brands do you recommend if I'm out looking for so, those kind of things? I'm very loyal, I guess, to MSI. Yeah. And they don't, they're not sponsoring me. So, um, but I do like MSI. Mm -hmm. um, I like NVIDIA yeah. video cards mm -hmm. and I like Intel processors. Um, yep. The, if you look at the bench testing, which is when they take your, the equipment and they run it separately or run it independent processing, they try to burn it out, see the speeds and everything. On the bench tests, the AMDs and the Intels, the ones I've seen on third-party ones, the AMDs are usually a little bit slower than the Intel, yeah. but they seem to be able to handle a little bit more oomph. That makes sense. Uh, maybe more universal. Yeah. Yeah. That's what but I've heard. I, I still prefer that power that Intel gives. Yeah. And yeah. It, it might be just my old fashioned because I am old for the IT world, I guess. <laughs> Name brands are good, man. There's nothing wrong with getting a good old fashioned Intel. It's not really old fashioned, but there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You, you go and, and buy the the weird stuff, and that's when you have the weird problems and right. things don't work out. Anita Bryant or Marie Osmond sang Paper Roses. Oh, okay. Is that right? Is that, does that strike a bell? I think the Osmond thing sounds yes. familiar. Yeah, okay. I just know I used to sing it to my wife when she'd want flowers. Oh, paper roll. Here, honey, let me sing you a song. Oh, yeah. I would not give her flowers for like the first four years we were together. Oh. And every time she would even bring it up, I would start <laughs> singing it. Was that a big step? Oh, when I finally did give her flowers? Yeah. No, because she was like, oh, you forgot about my. <laughs> Uh, oh. somebody, so you just ordered flowers because I was having them delivered to the house and they came late. Oh. And she like totally was like, you forgot. You must have just bought me flowers or something because you're being lazy. And I was like, oh. no. The one time I actually buy you flowers, you're going to give me crap. You're okay. <laughs> Gosh. So um, anyways, yeah, you want to look at your motherboard. Um, I go video card. Some people do CPU, whatever. Choose whichever one. They have different type of motherboards. This is very important when you buy your case. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but make sure your case is compatible with your motherboard too. Yeah, because it won't fit. Yeah. And then also make sure that your case comes with fans because you want to make sure that the fans actually one side sucks in while the other side blows. What do you recommend for the... Uh, cooling system then um it depends on what you're using it for mm -hmm. like if you're if it's for like the engineer company they don't need to worry about heavy processing all the time mm -hmm. i like the cool master just their stationary vented fans okay they do have the radiator fans i think it's also by cool master or Conzair. okay I can't remember. I could see it in my thing right in front. No, it's Corsair or something like that. Corsair. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, they have a really nice um, radiator that hooks directly up to the processor to cool that off. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Is it like a heat sink or is it uh, liquid cooled? It's a. It has a heat sink on it, but it also has the radiator liquid cool. Oh, that's amazing. How do you know when to change your liquid cool? Uh, nowadays you don't. That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean you can get the other ones that you can't uh, that we do, mm -hmm. but they have self-contained ones now. That's great, right? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I, you That's don't worry about it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so make sure you're cooling and make sure there's plenty of cooling. They make silent fans now. Just hint, hint. It doesn't even sound like it's taking off mm -mm. and still have that performance. Uh, make sure your video, your case fits your motherboard and your graphics card. Don't get a a thin case and have a full size. <laughs> a big graphic old graphics card. card with the... um, oh, and I did have an issue once where I built a server, 
and the uh, heat sinks or the CPU coolers were taller than the case. <laughs> and I was like, well, slow. I'm going to engineer this one correctly. Now, power supplies. Yeah. Make sure it has enough for your hard drive or for all your hard drives, all your graphics cards, mm -hmm. and is compatible with your motherboard. The worst thing you could do is buy a power supply that won't power your graphics card. Yes. You gotta get the you gotta get the right specs and you gotta make yeah. sure you're a little uh, overpowered. Yes. It's better to go high than low. Mm -hmm. Um I am a firm believer in going non modular power supplies just because it's one more thing that can break mm -hmm. i like it where it's hardwired in and you have the cables built in even though it doesn't look as pretty yep you can tuck them away and hide them where the modulars you have all these what molex connectors that plug into the and then into the device you can hide the cables but that's one more place that it can go bad so take it as you wish yeah. Was that, I have 10 minutes left? I think you have 10 seconds. I think oh. you have five, four. Oh, three. clock's wrong. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening to Geek Speak, sponsored by Data. This is Kenny McCormick, CEO of Celtic Fish, connecting our community one network at a time. Okay, we are running a car drive right now to help veterans all across America. So if you have an old car, truck, or van, even a motorcycle or an RV sitting around, you can right now give it away and help the vets. They really need your help. And your car will help support the vets and their families. And guess what? You even get a tax donation. Plus, we'll even come and pick up your car for free. And all you've got to do is pick up your phone right now and make a free call. Now is the perfect time to do something good for the vets. Give back to the vets right now for all they've done for this country. And your old car can really help them. So call the Veterans Car Donation Program right now for free pickup of your vehicle. Help the vets and help your taxes at the same time. Call right now. 800-296-1259. 800-296-1259. Two nine six one two five nine. That's eight hundred two nine six twelve fifty nine. Adopt US Kids presents what to expect when you're expecting a teenager learning.